What do you do if you have a parrot that is lunging at you? Generally a new parrot and specifically in this case, an Illiger's macaw. She's not an Illiger's macaw. She's a Catalina macaw, but a macaw that keeps lunging at you, new bird and just lunges at your hand. We'll take food, but lunges at your hand. Hey guys, I'm Kaylin, the author of The Parrot Bliss Bond. I have to over 20 species of parrots. I love parrots. If you wanna get blissed out and learn how to improve your bond with your parrot through diet, through behavior, through all sorts of things like that, you're in the right place. If you're used to hanging out, thanks for hanging out. You've already set your preferences and let's get started. So today I am hanging out with Kailani. Hi Kailani, who is the opposite of a parrot that's gonna lunge. I mean, she could lunge, she can lunge, she has lunged, but she's pretty easy going. She, as a matter of fact, the palm right there is kind of lunging at her and she's stepping away from him. She's like, get away from me, get away. Hi, sweetie, can I give you pets? Um, Kailani's not really the petter. She likes to give pets to Cami, our other macaw. She likes to give, not necessarily receive. So she's like, eh, I don't know. So she's telling me no. And if I push it, I'll get that beak on my fingers and I won't like that. What can you try if you have a parrot that is lunging? So first, what I think will be beneficial to know about a hands macaw, an Illiger's macaw, or a severe macaw, they're kind of in the mini macaw family, the hands macaw being the mini est. Um, these are macaws that are very friendly. They really need a lot of attention and a lot of engagement. So I would use that and I would recognize that that's really the way to this macaw's heart kind of thing. It means one of two things, either getting another macaw like we did there she is, for your macaw, or really spending a lot, a lot of time with your macaw so that they relax and kind of like get to know you and stop lunging. Lunging is definitely a, I'm nervous. Um, this is a, I believe a rescue and it's not a baby. So I'm nervous, who knows what I've been through. Um, I'm scared and so therefore lunging. The fact that the the, um, the macaw is taking food out of the hand, that's kind of really interesting. I would almost try to feed everything, pellets and fresh veggies. Right, sweetie? Hi, how are you? Because um, that, that's, that's kind of really interesting. Can I pet you? Can I pet you now? Hi. Hello, my Kailani. Notice when I'm talking to my macaws, I go slow, all of my parrots. And I try to use a soft, soothing voice because they may not understand English, but they do understand your tone. They do get a sense of the energy. They get it. They're smart. Did you hear that? I heard a frog. I heard a little frog. Wish I could see it. So, um, the way you can approach time and trying to get this bird past lunging. One way is just let them be. Just the way I have let Kailani just sit on the chair, the arm of the chair. She's just hanging out. Hey, sweetie. She gets to choose to go further away from me or closer to me. Hi, baby, how are you? How are you? When she comes to me, I talk to her. I'm paying attention to her. Hi, love. I'm not pushing her. I mean, look at, she, she's not a lunger. I can, I can put her on her back. I love doing that. But, um, you know, I'm just letting her be. I'm just letting her have her space. A part of creating that blissful bond. Uh, I I always crack up. It's like if I say that my parrot's orange, got orange on her chest, she'll change the color. If I say my parrot doesn't really lunge, I said she could, and you know, see, I was right. Um, so she lunged, but you could see she did absolutely nothing. Uh, oh, I bet the palm hit her again, and she thought it was me or something. I'm gonna have to trim that palm. So. Um, and I'm actually not leaning away from her because I'm afraid she's gonna bite me. I'm trying to lean my elbow on something. Oh, you wanna step up? What you doing? What you doing? 
So one way would be to just let them be with you. Like if you have the ability to spend tons of time with that Illigers macaw, now I've got two, they're multiplying. Then, um, let's see if we can, there. Then, just like these girls, I would just kind of let them hang out and do their thing. Hi, Cammy. Cammy is a harlequin macaw. And these birds are like, if you're there, I want to be there. If you're eating it, I want to be eating it. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of the way birds are. So, sorry, they keep interrupting me. So, one way for the time, if you can spend lots of time, is you just kind of let them do their thing. See, they're just doing their thing. Um, and you let them discover through experience and time that hanging out with you is fine. Nothing's going to happen. They're actually safe. They can relax. It can take some time. I would expect that an Illigers macaw is going to take like a real year to really relax um, and really get comfortable. Is it going to take that long for you to get more comfortable? No, the Illigers is already eating out of the hand. But what I want you to be aware of is the degree of um, relaxing it, it goes slow like think if you were rescuing a dog and the dog was obviously emotionally wounded and um, not just full of love and and panting and puppy hugs but instead if the dog is really Caesar Milan has gone and turned this dog around but um, you know the dog's not 100% right it, it takes time so parrots are the same. I want you to recognize, because I think it's really gonna help, that when you rescue an adult, no matter, like, if they've had a, a bad experience, that makes it even harder. But um, no matter what, it, it's really hard. Like, imagine, you, you've done this. You've gone on a business trip for a day or something like that, and um, or even gone traveling, and everything's different. Like, let's say you go to a foreign country, and. Everyone speaks differently and the customs are all different and the food's all different and they're driving on the other side of the street and everything's cray cray. Well, when a parrot gets me home, they've got the same thing going on. They are made to be in a flock that is together their whole lives. And so now instead they get yanked out of whatever they knew and now everything's new and different. So for them to really like fully assimilate all the changes and to fully get comfortable with all those changes, it takes time. I will say, generally speaking, the smaller the parrot, hey, well, you were putting your foot out. Did you want to step up or you just wanted to sneak into my ring? Hi, sweetie, can I pet you? Oh, oh, all right. Um, the smaller the parrot, the faster they will assimilate. They seem to go through it faster. The bigger the parrot, the longer it takes in my experience right girls these girls i adopted as babies so it's very different when you adopt an adult we have two adult amazons for example one chose me so she's actually really good with me the other one i step up for me and stuff but um and it it took him a couple years to like kind of really trust me like at this point um i can easily get him to step up at this point uh, he's not, he, like, he's like, I know you, you're not going to hurt me. I, if your hand comes toward me, it's, it's usually bringing a treat or, or food or whatever. Like he knows now, but it took a couple of years for him to like fully relax. And, um, I chose to just let him be a bird and I do handle him, but not a whole, whole lot. What's that? So, um, he's not like super duper tame. He's tame, but he's not super duper tame. So that's one approach. The next approach would be, hi, I got your toe, would be to spend more time and really do training. One thing that I say about training with a parrot or any other animal like a dog is it really lets you develop a language with that animal. It lets you develop routines and then the animal knows what's going on. And in that sense, it develops a language because then you have things like hand signals and the, the um, and body language. You, you get to read each other's body language so much better. That's a language. You have hand signals. You have things you do together. You know, the dog, you're taking them for a walk. Um, my birds, the ones that I walk, they know when I'm taking them for a walk. So they know what's going on. And now they're a part of what's going on. 
as opposed to the parrot that you just let be there. And what am I going to do next, Kailani? Where am I going to go next? How long am I going to be here? How long am I going to keep you company? Um, am I going to bring another bird? Like, you know, what is going to happen? So those, the training and those routines make a really big difference because all of a sudden it, the world becomes kind of like in a way knowable to the bird. The, um, the things that are happening become knowable, right, sweetie? When I give Kailani the hand signal, which I need both hands, so I can't do, she knows that I'm going to put her on her back. So she just like starts to flip over. It's, it's so cute. It's fantastic. I will try to do it. I don't think I can because I need two hands. And now they're eating my dress. Could you, could you excuse me? Hey, hey, now beyond my dress, you're, that's my leg. Uh-huh. That's my leg. Could you leave my leg in peace, in one piece? So there's a couple of things for you. One avenue is, you know, let them be a bird. Um, one avenue, a second avenue is let them be a bird, but spend a lot of time with them. The third avenue is really work on the training, really work on developing that bond and that connection. Uh, it also requires a lot of time. I would say that those are the three options and the three things that you can do. It can be done. I'm sure there are some very rare cases where it cannot be done, but um, if the macaws are already eating out of your hand, this isn't one of those cases. I think it's very likely that they just have to get over whatever happened in the past for them. Uh, time, time is my magic ingredient. Someone on my, uh, on the, the videos responded and they're like, time, the magic ingredient. I'm like, yes, <laughs> yes right i know now you're gonna think i'm crazy oh is that that dog next door that cute little barky dog what's that dog doing they are so aware and so alert of anything bird flying by overhead neighbor's dog or sometimes dog runs by out back and we don't like that huh yeah they get yeah, it's too close yeah be gentle all right, now with that, it's a wrap. Thanks for joining us in this blissful video. If your parrot is stressed out for any reason, make sure to get a bottle of Tink's Must Have Parrot Relief on parrotbliss.com. It's CBD and hemp oil, so it's beneficial for them. It'll support a strong immune system. So even if your parrot's not stressed out, it's super healthy. The omegas in the hemp are the right balance of omegas so that um, it gives you the right balance. That's an important thing. That's something that doctors give their patients, whether it's my Amazon parrot or some other uh, human or, or bird when their liver is having problems. So super beneficial. Oh my. And you know, I've hired her to be my gardener. I, she needs to do a little more trimming. She's a little behind. You're only going to get one walnut unless you um, do more trimming. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining me in this blissful video. Are you sharing that with me? I will see you in the next part of the video. If you have any questions, please be sure to comment below.